Hey, so we're going to be making some Ninja Creamy stuff. So to start off with, well, I'm going to make four at a time because I've got that size of a blender. Then I'll make some, uh, well, I'll make one just with some heavy cream. This is the way I like to do it, which ends up being a bit saltier than some people might like. But here we go. So I've got a one pound stick of butter because I don't have any quarters. <laughs> I cut it into quarters and I'm actually going to be doing four half sticks because, well, this is probably going to be eaten by my daughter who is getting her wisdom teeth out. So I've got that. I'm going to melt it in my super handy Pampered Chef measuring cup thing that has a lid. Anyway, so we'll bring this over here. This will go for about, this will go for about a minute and a half. So we'll let that go. So I have the butter melted. Great. Um, I'm going to stir it up. Now the Ninja Creamy containers, the max fill line that's on these is exactly two cups. So if you want to do three, you would want to mix it up to be six cups. If you want to do four at a time, you would do eight cups, which coincidentally is exactly how much this Vitamix holds. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. But it's all melted. Let that think about what it's done for us. I have chocolate keto chow in one of the better homes and gardens. This is the 18.5 cup size. It holds about a, a bag and a half. And I'm going to put four scoops because I'm doing four servings of keto chow all at the same time. We've got one, two, three, four. Great. Now I also have some rather well it's it's almost hot. It's it's warmer than the melting temperature of butter. I'm gonna pour that in there. Make sure this is turned off, well, down all the way. Great. Now I'm going to fill this up to the eight cup line. So there's stuff sticking to the sides. You can take a spatula and clean those out, or you can just turn it up higher. make sure I turn that down all the way because otherwise I forget and then it's like at full throttle when I go to turn it on and that's just no fun. So at this point we've got our four containers. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those up. Now the, more, the higher speed you run the Ninja Creamy the most, that was great. The more um, air is going to be inside of it. Never done that before. That was awesome. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill these up to the two cup line. And this does have quite a bit of air in it because I ran it at, well, normally I use a spatula to clean the sides so that I don't run it at as high of a speed because I don't want to introduce the air into there. So 
especially that first one, I think has way more air than it's supposed to. It will eventually come down. I'm going to put these straight into the freezer as they are. Just make sure that I get the lid on nice and tight. Hey, no sneezing. Okay. These are ready to go into the freezer. All right, now I'm going to make a single serve. Um, actually, I'm going to make apple pie with heavy cream. So as previously mentioned, the max fill line is exactly two cups. So you, if you want to make a serving of keto chow to fit in exactly the two cups, then you need to mix it up to be two cups. So far, the easiest way I've found to do that is to use a lot less water and then add water. So I'm going to add heavy cream to where I want it to. In this case, I'm just going to do four ounces or a half cup. Then I am going to do one scoop of keto chow. And normally I would fill the water up to the bottom of the threads. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a lot less water in there. Make sure that clicks. Shake it up really good. Pour this in here, and it's not even going to come close, but that's okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, uh, that's not going to work. If I try to do that, it's, I'm going to miss. I'm going to add some more water. Now I can get all the stuff that's left in here. And continuing to add water until I get to exactly the two cup mark. Now, just for good measure, because there's going to be a, pure, a section of this that is more water, I'm going to stir this up. <laughs> Put the lid on. And this is going to go right into the freezer. I'm not going to wait any. I'm just going to stick it right into the freezer, let it think about what it's done, and this will be ready tomorrow. And now, while we wait for the ice cream, or the stuff, to freeze, we're going to be treated to a little segment that I like to call questions from the future. Yes, I have uh, lifted or uh, leveraged this idea from Black Tie Kitchen and Series Keto. I think it's a great idea, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let's answer questions that people have asked in the past regarding keto chow and creamies, or just creamies in general, and see if we can get those answered before you even ask them. So, how long do you need to freeze the stuff in the bowls cups? I'm going to call them bowls, okay? How long do you need to freeze the stuff in the bowls before you can run it through the creamy? That depends on your freezer. Um, the creamy instructions say to freeze it for 24 hours. That's assuming a normal, I guess, average freezer. Um, if you have a freezer that runs colder or that has a lot of airflow in it, so it's cooling stuff down quicker, you may be able to use them a lot quicker. Um, the one that I made, you'll see this in just a bit. Ooh. Um, I put in at, I believe, 6 o'clock p.m. and ran it 12 hours later, and it turned out fantastic. So, kind of depends. There's no good answer for it. If in doubt, make them, stick them in the fridge, leave them there, however, I mean freezer, leave them there however long you want, um, up to and including a couple weeks. Um, they seem to keep just fine for a long time. Um, what fat 
works best. Now in this context, I'm using keto chow in the creamy. And so there's going to be a lot of questions. Should I use butter? Should I use heavy cream? Should I use coconut milk? Um, thus far, I have tried heavy cream and I've tried butter. Both have worked equally well, which is quite surprising because with a regular uh, bowl, a freezer bowl ice cream maker that I tried in the past, and with the compressor style ice cream maker, um, the butter didn't seem to work very well. It would coat the spoon and it would give her a, a weird consistency. Um, with the Ninja Creamy, on the other hand, um, I've tried a half a stick of butter in one. I've tried a third of a stick of butter in one. I haven't done a quarter stick, but uh, it's worked quite well. And since I typically am using keto chow with butter, salted butter to be specific, um, I see no reason to change my typical methodology for making keto chow, and I'll just continue to use butter because it's cheaper and it's delicious. Um, okay, so next comes how much heavy cream or butter or whatever should you use. Like regular keto chow, um, the amount of fat that you use is entirely up to you. Um, I wear a size 10 and a half shoe, which has nothing to do with anything. So therefore I use, uh, well, in this case, uh, to make the stuff earlier, I used a half a stick of butter per serving. Um, but again, like I just said, I've done one stick of butter for three, and that worked fantastically. Um, it, it's really up to you. Uh, it seems to be that the less fat you use, the less creamy it'll be, but depending on how it mixes, that all seems to just go out the window and you get consistent and amazing results regardless. So I do have some that I've mixed up uh, with PSMF macros that I'm going to try later on, but I, I think it's going to give good results regardless up to a certain point. So use whatever amount of fat as befits you and that you personally like. See if it works. The worst thing that can happen is you have delicious ice cream that you have to eat. Uh, to quote Serious Keto, um, the, the best things to, uh, to, to iterate on, to mess around with and experiment with recipes seem to be ice cream and pizza because even the failures are delicious. Um, how do you mix keto chow to fit into the cup? So in the cup, there is a two cup, or the bowl, in the bowl, um, there's a two cup fill line. The reason why it's down here instead of up higher is because one of the hallmarks of ice cream is that you're mixing in air and that's one of the things, uh, uh, so a small um, ice crystal size and air are the hallmarks of good ice cream. And it's introducing both of those as part of the process. And that requires more volume. Also, the blade has to be able to fit in there. And so you don't want to fill it up all the way because that wouldn't work. Um, but that means that a normal keto chow, as mixed up how I typically mix it up, which is around 18 ounces or 20 ounces, actually, um, that's too much liquid. It's not going to fit. You, you're almost doing one and a half because two cups is 16 ounces. Um, yes, eight ounces, 16. Yeah. Anyhow, um, so how do you mix it up? Um, I, well, I, sh I did show that earlier. Uh, you can mix it up in a blender. You can do it just in a blender bottle with less water, and then you add additional water to it um, to bring it up to the two cup line. If you mix it up normally, you'd probably need to put two keto chows into three uh, Ninja Creamy bowls. So there you go. Um, am I adding any ingredients to the keto chow as part of the process? Um, no, I'm way too lazy for that. Um, there are some people who are experimenting around with adding allulose, with adding more acacia gum, um, things like that. I, I really, really like 
the results that I've been getting with just keto chow and butter. And it's, to me, the consistency, the, uh, um, whatchamacallit, the, everything about it is, it's, it's actually, I think it's better than Rebel Ice Cream or Enlightened or any of the other ones. Uh, the main difference, difference being there isn't like stripes of fudge through it or something like that, um, which you can add, mix add-ins into it and take care of that. So yeah, I'm not adding anything um, to the keto chow recipe. I'm just doing it straight up. <clears throat> um, do you need to open the lid and wash off the blade before doing a respin? So in my experience, you do not need to open it up. Um, you do need to push the button to lower down to disengage the bowl from the spinny thing. I don't know, drill press. Um, and then you just, you can actually bring it down and then immediately re-engage it. Now, one reason why you might want to open it up and rinse off that blade is if you don't and you just run respin, respin, respin. You tend to get a lot of powder on the top that stays above the blade. And so when you open it up to look at it, you'll think, oh, it's still powdery. That's because there's a bunch of stuff on top. When you get further down, it's the right consistency. It just looks really powdery because you didn't wash off the blade or whatever. Uh, you're also going to be getting a lot of stuff on the top of the blade and then into the gear thing of the drill press. <laughs> anyway, cleaning that off is nice. I usually just clean it off when I'm done and move on. Uh, but you do want to keep that clean because it'll get the stuff caked up into it. Um, but yeah, you can, like I said, you can run a cycle disengage it, re-engage it, you know, it would twist down and then twist back up, um, and then immediately run a respin if you want to. Speaking of respins, how many respins do you need? That, there's no easy answer to that question. You just have to run it as many as you need. It could be, like, I think today, um, you'll see this later on, I think I did two respins, maybe three. Um, in the past, I've done four. I guess it kind of depends on how solidly it's frozen and how much fat is in there. And did you use the light ice cream or the regular ice cream button? The light ice cream, I, it, from what I can tell, it spins it at a higher speed and for a longer time, which works better for an ice cream that has more water in it, which Keto Chow does. Um, as opposed to a traditional ice cream recipe that has a lot more heavy cream and sugar. So there you go. So just do respins until you've gotten the consistency that you like. Which button on the front works best? There are several buttons. There's an ice cream, there's a gelato, there's a light ice cream. Um, in, the ex in, the, in my experiment, experience, in the test that I've done, um, I get better results using the light ice cream button than I do any of the other buttons. Your experience may differ. Go ahead and play around with them. Um, can you put ice cream back in the freezer for later? So after you, let's say that you're going along and you're like, hey, I've got this and I'm, I just can't finish this. You can run it back through the creamy. Um, what I would recommend would be to take your spoon and flatten it down. And then you're just going to run it through the creamy again as if it was a brand new thing. Um, the worst case scenario is you're just introducing additional air, which won't matter. Um, that seems to work okay if you don't want to finish an entire thing. Luckily for me, I've never had that problem because I'm mixing up a serving of keto chow to fit exactly into one of these. And so I'm eating the whole thing as a meal. And eating a pint of ice cream for an entire meal does not make me sad at all. Um, how many of the empty bowls, these guys, do you need? 
well, that kind of depends on um, your usage scenario. Um, if you happen to have gotten in on the QVC promo, the, the normal Ninja Creamy comes with three bowls. One, two, three. Um, QVC had a special going where you could get five bowls instead of three. Um, as of the recording of this video, if I remember correctly, there, there's a four bowl pack on the Ninja website that is out of stock. And the two bowl pack, I think, is in stock, but I'm not sure. Um, so if you get the standard one, say you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, you use a 20% off coupon that you got in the mail or whatever, you buy it, you'll be getting three of them. That should probably last you for a while. It, it is nice because you do have to freeze them ahead of time, which is why it's nice to have more bowls. Um, you may, if you do decide to get a creamy or you have a creamy, you may want to get a couple of extra bowls so that you can have more in the freezer so it's ready to go. That's entirely up to you. Again, I wear a size 10 and a half shoe and mine happened to come with five. So that's how many I have. I haven't had a need to get more. Five has been pretty good. But then again, I'm the only one in my family who has used the creamy yet. Miriam hasn't used it yet, and none of the kids have keyed into it yet either. I think it's because it's a little bit more work than they're willing to put in. But th I, they also haven't really tasted the results, and so I'm not having to compete with them for the bowls. Um, it may get to the point where we need eight bowls. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, for a single person, I haven't seen a uh, need for more than five. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? That's a really good question. Um, according to a lot of research on the internet, it's about 20.1 miles per hour or around nine meters per second. Thanks for asking. Now, here comes the fun part. We're doing a giveaway with the QVC version that has the five bowls of the Ninja Creamy. So people are going to want to know how to enter. The way you enter is in the description of this video, there will be a link to the place where you can enter. There's no purchase necessary, void or prohibited, yada, 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 okay? Um, there'll be a couple of ways that you can enter. Um, just go ahead and follow the instructions on that page. When does the giveaway end? We're planning to end the giveaway on October 5th, 2021. If you are in the future, hello, how's the future? Um, anyway, if you're in the future and you're watching this after October 5th, 2021, the giveaway has ended, unfortunately. If you're not in the future, well, you're always going to be in the future for me because, well, I'm recording this ahead of time. Anyway, if it's not after October 5th for you right now, yeah, just go into the description of this video. You can enter to win a Ninja Creamy with five bowls. Hey, it's awesome. So with that, let's go to showing you how to actually run the frozen bowls through the Ninja Creamy. All right, next morning, well, these things are frozen. Now here's a fun, interesting thing. You'll notice there's like this eruption thing. That's because the outside freezes first. The liquid's still, well, in the center is still liquid, and it bursts through as it's expanding. It doesn't impact anything. Um, I'm going to put the apple pie off to the side because I'm going to take this one I need to work and I'm going to put in some add-ons. Serious Keto call it the Elvis. I don't know. Anyway, so to use the, the creamy, um, it has this thing that looks just like a coffee pot. The whole thing looks like a coffee maker, by the way. It's really interesting. You've got the holder that this goes into. You've got 
this thing that looks like it's sharp, but really isn't. And what it does is on the, the device itself, the device itself is actually kind of a drill press. And what it'll do is this thing will go on the bottom. Oh, it's magnetic. I've noticed that before. It'll go on the bottom and it will grind down through this and then come back up. And it actually engages and disengages from this lid as it's doing that. So I'm you push this lever over and this guy pops right into there. Mine has this kind of weird, doesn't affect anything, but this goes on to here. You line it up, you lock it, it goes straight on, and then you twist it up and it engages. Um, I've found that I've gotten the best results when I use the light ice cream option, which is designed for ice cream that's using a little less um, heavy cream. In this case, I'm using butter, and it seems to work really well. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. grinds down and then it pulls it back out um, all the way while it's turning into like a giant snow cone. So now you'll notice that there's a little bit of chocolate inside of this section and it looks like I didn't clean it out very good from before. Anyway, so you undo this. Yeah, that actually turned out pretty good. Um, it kind of makes it a bit powdery. Um, just because it's it's frozen really, really well. Um, yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of Dippin' Dots. Um, but some parts of it... Ooh, yeah, that's a good chunk right there. I need to uh, make some space to get my mix-ins in, so I'm actually just going to eat this. Now, there's a respin option Oops. that allows you to get rid of the powdery texture. So I'm going to run that once. And then I'm going to add the mix in. Now, my understanding is what it's doing on the respin is it's actually imparting friction into the mix and using that to melt the, the stuff. Oh yeah, that's much better. Now, there's actually a hole that goes all the way down. Um, you can pop this off and clean it. Sometimes if you're having problems getting it off, like it's sticking to it, uh, because it actually, the, the drill press thing down here, it gets stuff on it. Um, I usually just keep a paper towel and well, I'll, show you. I'll show you how dirty it is. Okay, there we go. So it's got some stuff on it. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little hole here because I've got the mix-ins that I want to go. Oh, that goes all the way down. And I'm going to put peanuts and bacon bits into here because that sounds delicious. Um, if you remember from earlier, um, this is an, one serving of keto chow with 
melted butter as the fat source. And now I'm adding peanuts and I'm adding um, bacon. You might notice a theme here. I like it salty. Now, you can use the mix-in button. With peanuts like this, I've found that that just stirs them around. Um, I actually want it to chop them up a bit. And so I'm going to run the respin instead of the mix-in because the mix-in slowly mixes it in. And it tends to leave a lot of stuff on the top unless you use that hole that may or may not be there to go all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to respin it. Like it's going all the way down to the bottom and coming all the way back up. Buttons release it. Unlock it. Oh, oh, oh. But that one is stuck. There we go. So there we go. Nice. I've actually never had a stick like that before. So I've got little pieces of peanuts in there. It's just the perfect consistency. There will be a little bit of frozen stuff sometimes on the edge, depending on how good of a job it did at getting in there. But this is, this is, yeah, this is perfect. Um, as for cleaning, I usually like to pop this guy off. I just like lick it off because it's delicious. And then I'll wipe that off and uh, rinse it in the sink with very hot water. So that's it. That is making keto chow with a creamy. I'm sure that there are different mixes, different recipes that you can do that will change the properties. Um, but I'm, I'm really easy. I'm also really lazy and I just want some, a simple. So it's, this is just keto chow. You could make it with heavy cream. You could make it with um, butter. You could add some extra stuff, but I'm just going to put the lid on this and I'm going to take it to work and eat it there. Make sure it's clicked down all the way. So there you have it. As Serious Keto would say, who gave me, by the way, the idea for the bacon and, um, and peanuts. Anyways, he would say, thanks for watching.